guys and welcome back. On this week's show, part four of our music stand build. Well, we've come a long way on this build and as I said in last week's show at the conclusion, I'm actually quite surprised at how much work this project has been. Um, but there are two more major components to do for this build and one of them is the, the two knobs or the, the two locking pins, one for the pivot action and one for the height adjustment. And the other major part of this build is going to be the actual rack that houses your music. So in order to be a little more efficient because it involves epoxy use, um, we're going to go ahead and measure our brass rods, cut them to length, and we're going to glue a block of oak on the end of each one. Well, for the height adjustment um, rod, you want to slide this brass rod all the way in as far as it'll go till it butts up into the hole that's on the back side of this collar. Once you get it there, measure out 3 eighths of an inch outside of the edge of the collar here and that's the length that you're going to want for the height adjustment. For the tilting adjustment, you want to take the measurement from the outer edge here to the outer edge right here and as well add another 3 eighths of an inch. So <clears throat> those will be the methods that you'll use to determine the length of your rods. So what I've done at this point is I've cut a couple little pieces of oak and these are three quarters by three quarters and they're half an inch um, in height I guess we call it here. And I drilled a one eighth inch hole, three eighths of an inch deep, which is the extra of course that we allowed um, on our rod and I've mixed up a little bit of five minute epoxy and I've glued those rods in to those blocks and um, for now we're just going to put them aside and let them set up and uh, we'll deal with them once the epoxy is set up. Well we're back at the bench and uh, I'm going to show you what I've got in mind for the rack that holds the music and the first thing that you're probably thinking is oh no he's got out his pad <laughs> and marker so I'm just gonna do a quick sketch here just to show you what I have in mind um, this is just what I'd like to see it look like and it could change as it goes on who knows um, but there's really no way for me to show you uh, how to draw this out um, I'm just showing you what I'd like to do and you could come up with your own design. You could even just do a simple 45 to frame if you like. But what I'd like to see is at the bottom here there will be a platform and the platform will have a lip on it that will keep the music from sliding off. Um, I would also like to see a back lip here, something like this. And in the middle, there'll be a section that some that looks kind of like this. It's just like that. So this will be the platform that your music sits on with the lip, and this is the upright at the back of the where it starts. And then I'd kind of like to have it so that this piece is something like this. And then we have another piece that's identical. Good luck with me drawing identical on this side. I'd like to have a connecting bar between the two and just for some accent I want to have four brass rods that will connect right here. So this is kind of the design that I'm hoping to come up with 
and the full dimensions of this is it's going to be 12 inches high and I want to try to get it 18 inches across. So there's really no way for me to show you how to draw this but uh, once we get into the joinery and that sort of thing um, I'll go through the process with you but for the time being all I can do is draw up these patterns make some templates and then I'll come back and see you when that is all done. Well I've got the design drawn out on this hardboard and I think it's going to work the way I like it. Um, all in all we're going to have five pieces that will make up this entire rack. There'll be two of these uprights here and there'll be the one centerpiece so that's three pieces. This crossbar is four and the bottom shelf along here will be five. There's really only three templates though, and that will be this center section, this top bar, and one of these, because this is duplicated on the opposite side. So, <clears throat> you wanna take this template now and take it over to the scroll saw, and we're gonna cut this out, and then uh, I'll come back and show you. You'll probably get a better idea of exactly what it is that I've got in mind after I get it cut out. And there you can get a rough idea of what we're going to be looking at when all is said and done. Uh, and of course the brass rods will go between this section here. This is all going to be made out of three eighths of an inch thick oak. And um, our grain orientation for the bottom piece is going to be this way. Whereas these upright pieces, the grain will be this way. And this piece here, the grain, will be along its length. When marking out these pieces, you'll want to make sure you leave a little extra in the length because this piece and this piece, they are going to be mortise and tenon into this bottom section here. Um, as well, on this piece here, I'm not sure how I'm going to attach that yet. Um, it may be a combination of dowels and then, of course, these brass rods that will hold it in place. But for now, you want to remember that on these uprights, you want to leave a little bit extra, probably about a half an inch extra material at the bottom of it. Now that we have the patterns drawn out, I think we're going to turn our attention back to our retaining knobs um, or our retaining pins. Uh, that epoxy is set up now, so let's grab those pins and head over to the lathe. Well, you can see here that what I've done is taking that brass rod that's been epoxied into that block, and I've just set it up into a drill truck into the headstock, and uh, I'm just going to turn our speed down here, and uh, we're going to turn a little decorative knob on the end of this. And there is our knob for our height adjustment. And uh, of course, that just goes in through this hole, arrange your height that you want, and it just goes right in place like that. Um, that one there is done. I did give the brass a little bit of polish. I think what I'd like to do here as well, I didn't mention it before, but I think I'd like to have this hole here to have a countersink in it as well, just to give us a little something to guide us in. But there it is, there's the one knob. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the other knob for the pivot adjustment, and um, you don't need a, a video of how to turn the second knob, and uh, I'll see you when I'm done that. And there is our tilt uh, retaining knob turned. And um, now that we've got the, those completed, um, now, just as I said, we're gonna turn our attention to the rack that holds the music. Well, we're back to the rack of the music stand, and uh, I've got, you can see off to the far right there, all of my pieces of oak milled down to three-eighths of an inch thick. The first piece that we're going to start with is this base piece right here. So we can get rid of these other templates and stick them off to the side. We don't need them right now. But what we're going to do is trace out our... Um, pattern here or our template onto a board and what I've done 
is on the one side I've taken it over to a jointer and I've given this a perfectly flat edge along here. So we're going to trace our template onto our stock but what I'd like to do is this will be cut out with a scroll saw but initially I'd like to run the table saw in through here stopping it just shy because I need this to be a nice flat surface here for these uprights to mount to when I do the mortise and tenon. So I'm going to cut in to a stop on the table saw. Same with this. Cut in to a stop on the table saw and uh, then we're going to take it over to the scroll saw and finish the cutting. And there you can see where I've taken the table saw up to a certain point and stopped so that I'm not cutting into my uh, template. As well, I've cut the top section, which is also flat, using the rip fence on the table saw. And from the off cut, I was able to get a piece that was big enough or wide enough to serve as this particular piece here. So now I'm going to head over to the table saw, or sorry, the scroll saw. I'm going to finish this off here and uh, we'll come back with the finished um, section. And that would be our first piece cut and I guess our second one as well. So we're going to put these aside and our next step is going to be to cut these particular pieces. So we have a template here. We have our pieces of red oak. We just need to trace these out but don't forget to leave about a half an inch of extra material along the bottom in order to cut a, uh, a mortise and tenon joint. I have my next two pieces marked onto one piece of stock and I've come in half an inch on either side. What I'd like here is a quarter inch thick uh, tenon to be at the end of these pieces here. So what I'm going to do is take this over to the table saw and I'm going to run the blade at a height of 1 16th of an inch and take off the excess material on both sides of this board. Then when I cut them out, I'll end up with that quarter inch thick tenon at the, uh, the base of each piece. And just like that, we have our tenons cut on the base of each of these pieces. Now when we cut this on the scroll saw, I'm going to be bringing these tenons in half an inch from the end of each of our pieces and uh, that way, you know, it'll hide the, the mortise when we cut it into the upright. So <clears throat> I'm going to head over, cut these out on the scroll saw and then we're going to move on to our next step. Our next step in this process will be to cut the mortises now that will be in this base piece to accept our uprights. Uh, you want to be careful because being only 3 8 of an inch thick with a quarter inch tenon that doesn't leave much material on the outside. So don't go for too tight of a fit. You don't want to split it, but yet be careful that you don't come out through the side with your chisel. So with that being said, now we're going to go ahead and uh, mark and cut these mortises. Well, sometimes when you fly by the seat of your pants on a design, uh, it doesn't work. And that was the case here. Let me just show you. Um, I tried to chisel out that mortise with, uh, with a chisel by hand. Didn't work. Just chipped away, destroyed the wood. Um, then I changed my dimensions, shrunk it down a bit, cleaned it up, and tried it with a router. That was even worse. Um, so now I'm kind of rethinking the design. I still want those uprights, and I still want everything to to fit mortise and tenon. And I think maybe the best thing to do is to, um, instead of having that bottom piece that everything mortises in, be three eighths of an inch thick. I think maybe if I increase the size of that piece and then mount all my uprights into that, it may work. So um, let's try that. And on we go with plan B. 
Uh, sure, it didn't work, but this one does. So all I've done now is instead of the base being this piece right here at the bottom, uh, instead of that being three eighths of an inch, I've changed it to three quarters of an inch thick and I will mortise in all of my upright pieces and glue them in place as well as my shelf at the bottom will be inserted into a dado um, and I guess all in all we're going to end up with uh, probably a little better connection and a little sturdier um, piece here but live and learn uh, this is what happens when you fly by the seat of your pants and hey even I make mistakes so I'm going to continue mortising these in and uh, I'll come back to you when I have everything uh, chiseled out and the pieces dry fit in place. Well that seemed to work just fine and uh, now we need to accommodate our shelf out this front end here and um, I'd like it to stick out an inch and a half from here. I'd like it to be three eighths of an inch thick. So if it sticks out an inch and a half and I do say a quarter inch um, dado across here to accommodate it, I'm going to need it to be an inch and three quarters in width. So I'm going to cut a strip an inch and three quarters and then cut it to the proper length. And uh, then we're going to cut a dado across here to take our shelf. And that's our shelf in place that will hold our music. Um, at this point, what I want to do is I want to round off these top corners here on both of these pieces. I want to round off this shelf and uh, I'm just going to use a circle template and draw a circle on each corner here as well as these top corners. Round them off and uh, make them a little more pleasing. And then once we get that done, um, I think what I'm going to do at this point in time is give it a good sanding and start gluing things together for this section. Well, I have the center upright glued in as well as the shelf and I've also glued in a 1 8 by 1 8 of an inch strip all the way along here and that's going to keep our uh, music or our music book or binder or whatever you're using from slipping off of that shelf. So we're going to leave this for now. We don't want to glue in both of these uh, outer uprights, but I am going to glue one in. And then once that's set up and it's done, then we're going to come back to it to install that top bar that goes between the two of them. All right, so this left one here, this left upright is glued in. This one is not. And the reason for that is I think we've obviously proven that our mortise and tenon joinery with 3 8 of an inch just isn't going to work with this particular project. So I need to somehow join this piece in and I don't really like the idea of just a glue joint. So I'm going to use dowels, small 1 8 of an inch dowels that will help the glue joint and uh, keep everything together. I like four inches from here to here. So what I've done is I've cut a, a piece of scrap and laid it there so that this is exactly four inches from this and parallel with it. And I'll hold that in place. I'll hold this uh, right section where I want it. And then I'm gonna mark out these two sides here and uh, take them over to the scroll saw, cut them, and sand them up to the line and fit that piece in place. Then from there, I'll drill some holes for a couple of dowels and I'll glue this upright in, but not before I drill some holes for my brass rods that I would like to have go up through the top. I have the piece sanded and put in place and I've also marked the spots where I would like to have our um, rods coming through here. So all I need to do now is line up the square with those marks and transfer those lines up to this top piece. Once we get these 
lines um, transferred, I'm going to take this over to the drill press and drill a 1 8 hole down through the center of each of these five spots for the rods, as well as I'll drill uh, a hole probably about a quarter inch deep into each of these ones down here to accept the rods. All the drilling here has to be done before the assembly. Once I get those holes drilled, due to a lack of time here, um, I'm just going to drill in, like I said, a couple of 1 8 inch dowels, very short pieces into here to allow me to glue that into place on both sides. I'll glue in this second upright and then when I come back to you, uh, this whole assembly should be together minus the brass rods, of course. Well, that rack assembly is glued up and you can see it right here. Um, I put 1 8 dowels in all of the holes. That's just to assist me in gluing it up. They're not held in with anything. They're just dry fit and they'll be removed once that whole assembly is uh, dried and I can unclamp it. So now that we've got that done, the next step is going to be to give the entire assembly a very thorough sanding. Uh, take out any imperfections. I'd like to take off some of that harsh edge all the way around. Just give it a really good sanding. And then once we get that sanded, our next step is going to be to attach it to our um, hinge uh, bracket. We've unclamped the rack and uh, sanded it all up. I'll just show you here what it is that we have. And we're in the home stretch. Now it's time to mount that rack onto those hinge brackets. The problem is that because we modified the um, original design due to our mortise and tendon problem, the shape of our rack has now changed. So we're going to have to um, go in and modify the actual hinge brackets themselves. Well, this is the back of our rack. And our modification, if you remember, was this larger strip here to accept the joinery. And the problem that it's caused is that our um, hinge brackets no longer sit flush onto this particular surface. So <clears throat> how we're going to overcome that is I'm going to set them in their final resting place and take some careful measurements and I'm going to end up taking a little notch out of each one of these so that it can sit flush onto this piece here. But that's not the only thing we need to do to mount it. But we'll start with that. Cut the notch to um, accommodate this thicker strip here. Those notches are cut in both pieces and they fit almost like they belong there. Just like that. Um, they're nice and flush to both this back surface and to this recess here. Um, the problem is now that that glue joint is not going to be strong enough, as far as I'm concerned, to hold this music rack with a, a music book on it. So the next step that we're going to take in order to mount this is I've started marking out these sections here where these pieces go and what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a quarter inch groove in each one of these brackets and I'm going to cut a quarter inch groove into each one of these probably about an eighth of an inch deep each and then I'm going to cut a hardwood quarter inch by quarter inch key kind of like a spline and I'm going to glue it in place on here and as well it'll be glued in place on here and that is going to assist in strengthening this glue joint and putting some of that pressure from uh, the weight of the book on the actual spline instead of just a glue joint. So I don't think you need a video on how to to cut this particular groove for the key but uh, I'll go ahead and cut it and I'll come back and show you what uh, what I've done before I actually glue it up. And here we have our two uh, brackets and you can see we've got the just a little recess, a little mortise carved into each one and I've got a 
one eighth, or sorry, a one quarter by one quarter by a one and one eighth inch long key that will be glued into each one of these. And that's going to help a lot to strengthen that joint as well. I think just because I have the extra material, I'm going to use a one eighth inch dowel and drill it into each one of these sections here just to give it that little bit of extra strength that I'm going to need. And uh, I think I'll be comfortable with that. So <clears throat> I'm going to glue this up and come back and see you. Just before I glue it up, I just want to show you one last thing here. And I had some extra brass rod and for a little bit of extra stability, as well as this quarter by quarter inch key, I've also added a little brass pin in each one of these hinge brackets that will firmly secure this and stop it from uh, breaking away. And should the glue joint start to slip or fail, that pin is going to help to hold it in place. The final glue up is done on this rack and uh, it's looking great. Um, my suggestion, it's, it's a tough glue up. It's very finicky with a lot of different moving parts with uh, that things that have to line up with the alignment pins and the retaining pins and all of that jazz. Get yourself a helper. Um, it was nice enough for my wife to come out and help me. And if you have that uh, opportunity, make sure you get someone to help you glue this up. So we're going to leave this overnight now. We want to make sure all that glue is completely dry and uh, there's nothing more to do to it really. So we're going to leave it. And uh, when I come back, um, I'll give you my final thoughts here and uh, run through the stand with you. And there you have it, a music stand. Um, guys, a little bit more work than what I thought it was going to be, but really a great project. It turned out spectacular. I really love it. Um, what can I say? Uh, the hinge pin, uh, I don't think I touched on that. And that is the pin, of course, that uh, allows everything to pivot. It's just a piece of brass rod, the one eighth of an inch. And uh, all I did was CA glue it into place, a little dab on either side. Just be careful, of course, that you don't glue it to the center bar because you'll stop it from pivoting. Um, as far as adjustment of the stand, all you need to do, if you want to adjust the height, you pull out that front pin, uh, the retaining pin, but of course, hang on to the center bar because as soon as you pull the pin, weight, gravity, it will, it's going to win, it'll make it drop. But uh, hang on to that center bar, pull the pin, raise it to the height that you want. You've got it in three inch increments, if you remember that we drilled those holes three inches apart. Raise it or lower it to where you want and reinsert the pin in the closest hole to hold it in place. Um, it's as simple as that. As far as the tilting mechanism of the, of the rack that holds the music, same deal. Pull that pin, rotate it to the position that you'd like to have the rack and uh, reinsert the pin. It's not rocket science. It is a simple design and it really works. There's nothing more that I can say about it. Classic design with the legs. I mean, I, I love everything about this product. I love the way that it turned out. About the only thing that I'm going to uh, do to it from now is I'm gonna mix up some shellac and give it a couple coats just to finish it off. But other than that, this is the project, this is it, and this is what we ended up with. Uh, had a little bit of a snag with my design on the rack. Um, that was my own fault. With the years of experience that I have in woodworking, I should have known better than to try to cut a mortise and tenon into material, uh, leaving that little, the 1 16th on either side, especially in oak. I should have known better than that. But live and learn, like I said, I make mistakes too, but we compensated for it and we adjusted the design and uh, the results speak for itself. Guys, I wanna thank you for watching me and hanging in here for this four part series. And uh, I'm gonna see you again next week with yet another woodworking video.